Now, apart from this hunky dory situation, something can happen which we don't want. Like, chain termination. Now suppose this x dot, right? Now there will be lots of reactions happening concurrently. There will be a hundreds and thousands of x dot having this step and at a period of time there will be hundreds and thousands of this ethyl free radical as well. Now suppose this x dot don't react with this ethane. This x dot can react with another x dot created in the system although the chance is less but suppose the chance is never zero. The, there is always a finite probability that this x dot can react with another x dot. When that happens, we have a molecular form of halogen. Now we are no more giving light. So we are no more generating x dot. The initial x dot that was generated that is there. So this would tend to terminate the reaction because if the number of x dot is decreasing then this step will not occur. When this step does not, do not occur then there is no alkyl free radical and where, when you don't have alkyl free radical you don't have the required product. So x dot need to survive in the system in order to perpetuate the system. If x dot moves out in the form of x2 then the reaction tends to terminate. So this step is called chain termination. Another reaction that can terminate your chain is when x dot reacts with there will be uh, multiple x dot in the system concurrently present and there will be multiple ethyl free radical also concurrently present so there can be a reaction between this x dot and this ethyl free radical when that happens we have haloethane now haloethane is the desired product but this step is not desired because when we, we want haloalkane to be produced and along with it we also want another halogen free radical to be produced. That will go next in the next reaction producing more haloethane. But here we have only haloethane and there is no x dot produced because this x dot is clubbed with this ethyl free radical. So this although gives one molecule of the product but this terminates the reaction because this ethyl free radical must react with molecular halogen. When that happens we have a haloethane and apart from haloethane we also have a ethyl halogen free radical and that will perpetuate further the reaction. But when this happens there is no x dot produced and when there is no x dot further produced then there will be no further reaction. So these two steps tries to terminate the reaction so these two steps are not desirable these two steps are desirable. So, but initially what will happen initially what will happen is x dot would be present in very small quantity and the quantity of x dot numbers of x dot will be larger so the probabilistically this ethyl free radical will probabilistically react with x2 but as the reaction proceeds and all the x2 starts to be consumed then the, when the number of x2 decreases then there will be a finite chance of this x ethyl free radical to be reacting with x dot and finally the reaction will terminate. But nevertheless if it happens before then there will be a terminating tendency in the reaction. So these are the chain propagating step, these are the chain terminating step or chain propagation step and chain termination step. And this is how it happens. This is the basic mechanism of the reaction. You have to bear in mind which are the chain termination step and which are the chain propagation steps. Right. All right. So this is the basic mechanism, right? And this is how we get ha haloalkane. This is how substitution occurs. Now there will be question of reactivity. All alkanes will not react similarly. All halogens will not react similarly. The reactivity of chlorine will differ from that of bromine. Will differ from that of iodine. But in general, this will be the step that would be followed. So this is not going to change. These steps not going to change whether you change the halogen, whether you change the substrate or alkene. So this is the same, right? After having understood this, let's study what happens when we vary substrate and what happens when we vary halogen. Now before I rub this out, I would like to draw your attention to this step. This is the step that we have to discuss later. Here the situation was simple. Here you had ethane. So when this x dot required hydrogen, you didn't th 
thought much of as to which carbon this halogen must approach in order to abstract hydrogen because both are same it doesn't matter which hydrogen uh, carbon it approaches but when you have two different carbons in this case you both you have both the carbon as one degree but suppose you have one degree two degree three degree all sort of carbons then in that situation you have to judge based upon the concept of stability that we have studied previously as to which carbon would be approached but this is a mechanism right all right Now let's extend this discussion further and let's talk about what happens suppose if I take propane, pro pro propane, propane instead of ethane and let's keep this X2 in general doesn't matter whether it's chlorine, bromine or iodine now if I'm going to take propane instead of ethane then when you do the chain prop propagation step when you bring a X dot now before you listen further first of all be very much acquainted with which is the chain propagation step and which is the chain termination step because I'm just going to say this is the chain propagation step and you have to catch up with me so get back and learn which is the chain propagation step practice it by your hand but just by looking at stuff you will never learn unless you practice it on paper right so this when, when in the first step of the chain propagation step an X dot comes it will look around, it will look around and find the favorable position of carbon so let me consider first that X dot is stable enough so it can wait and search if it can wait and search then it will search which is the most favorable carbon now if we draw a hydrogen from one degree carbon, let me number this, if we draw it from C1 if we abstract hydrogen from C1 then a free article would be generated on C1 if you do the other way abstracting it from C2 then a free radical would be abstracted uh, generated on C2 now I didn't mention it before but nevertheless this is the RDS of the reaction because this is the most difficult step the first uh, the, if we, the step to that will follow this will be an easy step because in the next step this alkyl free radical have to react with this halogen and that would be readily react this that reaction will readily take place because this is a weaker bond between X and X this will be broken and a stronger bond between C and X will be formed so it will be a favorable situation in the product so this reaction will take place readily right so next step is easy so the most difficult step is the RDS this step is the most difficult so this step is the RDS now the question is the RDS would be crossed easily if the product is more stable now if you have to look the product for this reaction is this these two intermediates this is one degree free radical this is two degree free radical and if you, do, if you remember inductive effect and if you remember hyperconjugation you'll have no problem to declare that this is more stable than correspondingly one degree free radical because you know you, uh, you have inductive from both sides of methyl you have also inductive from methyl but here you have hyperconjugation of 6 alpha hydrogen from both sides and here you have hyperconjugation from only 2 hydrogen from one side right so because of hyperconjugating effect and if you are missing on that go and revise it but nevertheless because of hyperconjugating effect this is more stable so this x dot will come and attached here but it's not like it 100% would be this product and 0% would be corresponding to this intermediate there would be certain percentage of all the possible products